Welcome back to Friday Night Lives. My name is Craig Crash Collins here as we are spending every Friday during the IHSA sectionals here for uh, high school football, uh, reacting, watching, digesting, breaking down uh, the sectional playoffs and beyond. Um, and so the game that I'm currently watching right now uh, originally looked to be maybe the upset of the sectional so far as uh, Center Grove at one point trailed uh, Franklin uh, Franklin Central 10 to 7. Now Center Grove has taken the lead 14 to 10 um, and is driving with uh, just under five minutes to play, trying to salt this game away and move on after just a game that we didn't see coming as far. Like, you know, I even said it in our sectional breakdown how there's there was no other team in that sectional that center grove is in that is above 500 and so for them to go up against franklin central which i mean franklin central's battle tested they've played a lot of good schools over the course of the season um but just never really measured up to um a team like a center grove so the fact that center grove looks to be coming away uh, with the uh, you know with some momentum here and potentially getting to a win, uh, that's pretty incredible. So Center Grove driving now. They're just on their side of the fifty, so about the forty-five yard line. They have a pass deep. It's going to be broken up. No flag. Uh, now we get a late flag. Uh, it looked like it. I mean, that's a ticky tack uh, call. Could go either way. Uh, so I, I I think I agree with the penalty. Um, it just is one that you know you you know. The defender for the flashes got there just a little bit too early, um, and that's a big penalty there. On you know the the unfortunate thing is the score bug uh, for this Center Grove uh, Franklin Central broadcast does not have the down or distance um, and does not have the time that's left on the clock. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you, you know that's a big play that you would have liked to have gone your way if you're Franklin Central um, instead. Uh, the Center Grove just keeps marching and marching on now on the 38 of Franklin Central in a situation where you know more time is going to come off the clock. They're going to have more of a chance to uh, you know run the clock down and ultimately secure the win to advance to the sectional championship. As that one's handed off and the running back just slips and falls, so that's unfortunate for them. It'll be second down. The other game I was keeping track of. Kind of shocking for different reasons, and that is the fact that the um, Brownsburg Bulldogs are just absolutely uh, rolling the Ben Davis Giants. I did not see that one coming. Thought it was going to be a little closer, especially in Ben Davis. Um, but Brownsburg, a game, kind of a statement game here. I mean... You talk about a statement game in the sense that here's a Brownsburg team that is number one in the state. They lose the last week of the regular season to Hamilton Southeastern. The Jaden Whitaker, their quarterback, goes down. So there's all this kind of doubt surrounding this team, how they're going to look. I mean, they with a healthy Jaden Whitaker, they just barely beat Ben Davis week one. So how is this going to affect the game? Is this a situation where we see a team that's, you know, top three in the state go down in the first game that they play in the postseason. Um, and Brownsburg comes out on the road, makes a statement against a good Ben Davis team um, and ends up, uh, you know, all told, I mean, it is in the third quarter. They are up 20 uh, with 334 left. So, I mean, there is some time for a comeback for Ben Davis. But as of right now, a huge statement being made by Brownsburg as over the Center Grove game, there's a handoff. The running back for Center Grove gets around the corner, gets a first down, and is out of bounds at about the 23-24 yard line. Um, as Center Grove is putting kind of the finishing touches on what was a very big scare. I mean, you wondered how this would go because this is not a Center Grove team like it's been in the past where you've got, I mean, there's obviously a lot of talent. You've got your Micah Coils. Their quarterback is really good. Um, but definitely not as stacked as maybe we're used to seeing out of Center Grove. We're not used to seeing, 
we're used to seeing a lot more explosiveness than maybe what we've seen on this year's Center Grove team. And it almost feels like, you know, when you've won back-to-back state championships, you wonder how much, you know, you're really invested, even when it becomes tournament time, you know, with some of these games where you're projected to win. I mean, like I said, there's no team in the sectional for Center Grove, in Center Grove's bracket, that is above 500. So you kind of think, okay, well, we're two, you know, back-to-back defending champions. We've got this under wraps. And instead, Franklin Central has, I think, really opened, you know, this Center Grove team's eyes. And, you know, because it's one of those things where you look at the results and you say, okay, is this a situation of Center Grove? Like, like does Franklin Central have this, the blueprint for Center Grove? Or is Center Grove just caught a little bit napping? Um, and I think it's the latter. I think Center Grove, you know, you think, okay, we've, you know, we're picks to go all the way to Lucas Oil. We're the only team above 500 in our sectional. Let's just kind of go through the motions, pe- pick up a couple of wins and a trophy, and see who we play in regionals. And Franklin Central says, no, we're at home. We have an opportunity to pull off an upset. And they were very close to getting that done. As Center Grove still having some difficulty moving the football, they're back now at their own third or at the uh, Franklin Central thirty. Um, so they take a couple steps forward, take a step back. But the most important thing is uh, they keep running that clock down, uh, and that's what they need to do to be able to salt this game away and and come away with a win. So Center Grove. Looks like they're going to pick up the win here um, in the uh, semifinal round of the sectionals as their quarterback throws one deep down the field. It's going to be caught. What a catch down at the two-yard line. Wow. That was a sensational catch. A great throw in the pocket, steps up, and just connects Falling down was the receiver for Center Grove, and that puts the ball at about the two or three yard line. Center Grove in prime position to get ready and rumble into the end zone and advance to the sectional championship game next weekend. So it's first down and goal inside the five yard line. Here's the handoff. Right into the pile. Uh, I think that's Micah Coyle. Only gets inside the three. Ben Davis does have the football back in their game uh, with just about 2.04 to play in the third quarter. The still trailing uh, Brownsburg 40 to 20. So, like I said, I mean, Brownsburg's not out of the woods yet. Uh, you know, I wouldn't put, you know, Ben Davis isn't quitting. They're in their cool black uniforms. I love those uniforms. So they've got an opportunity to come back here. So Center Grove, if they can punch this into the end zone, it'll pretty much wrap this one up as Micah Coyle gets to about the goal line but gets pushed back. So it'll be third down and goal from about the one. Maybe a little bit inside the one. So looking at some scores across the state of Indiana here. Here on this sectional semifinal Friday night. Come on. You've got... Bremen over Lake Station, 47 to nothing. Knox over West Noble, 14 to nothing. New Powell with a 33 to 3 lead over Greenfield Central. Uh, Castle over New Albany, 21 to 14. Heritage Hills, 28 to 12 leaders over Charlestown. Madison Grant trailing Northfield, 21 to 14. Westfield with a 21 to 9 lead over Carmel. Uh, Lafayette Central Catholic leads Lewis, Lewis Cast, 34 to 27. Uh, Columbia City beats DeKalb 49 to 7. Park Tudor leads Fountain Central 35 to 26. East Central leads Silver Creek 42 to 6. 
Uh, Brownsburg uh, up 41 to 20 on Ben Davis. Northwood up 45 to 17 on South Bend. Uh, Monrovia leads Speedway by one, 21 to 20. Carroll leads Tri Central, 21 to nothing. Garen Catholic leads Tippecanoe, 34 to 14. Uh, Adams Central all over South Adams. So that's that was my 1A pick to win uh, the state championship. They go down to Adams Central. Adams Central just had a better season. They're the stronger team. Um, so there's some of these scores. Uh, Lutheran with a big 63 to nothing win over Cloverdale. They advance to the sectional championship game. Cathedral over Lawrence Central, a close one right now, 37 to 35. As Center Grove takes the snap, they're going to take the knee and that all but does it. Here in the 6A sectional semifinal matchup. I appreciate the likes. Hope your Friday is going well. And that's it's over. Center Grove avoids a big scare. A big scare. Like I said, you know, it, it's kind of hard to um, to tell. You know, is it a situation where does Franklin Central have just the the blueprint, or is it a situation where? Um, where, you know, Center Grove was napping just a little bit. Um, sectional 8, you know, Center, Franklin Central comes in at 3 and 6, uh, but, you know, and, and gives a big scare to Center Grove, but Center Grove hangs on and gets the win. What about Triton Central? Let me see if I can find their score. Uh, the score that I see is they lead Brownstown Central 7-6 to six in the second quarter. That's the last score update that I have. So let me see what other game I can get pulled up here. Is at the end of the third quarter, Brownsburg is leading Ben Davis 41-20. to 20. That game pretty much over at this point. See if I can't find that. Um, either Lawrence Central and Cathedral, or um, or if Triton Central's on. I thought Heritage Christian lost last week. That's weird. Hamilton Southeastern was taking care of uh, Homestead the last time I saw. It was like twenty-one to nothing. In that game, Penn versus Carroll. I know Carroll was starting to pull away there. Some of these games have like eight channels showing the same game, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. No one's saying that's a bad thing. Lafayette Central and Lewis Cass is one of the games that's being broadcasted. That was a pretty good one. If I could find Cathedral, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, I'm not going to find, because that's like next week. Now. Or, yeah, that's next week. Okay. Okay, thanks. No problem. No problem at all. So, in that case, let's see here. What game do we want to go to next? Let's see how Burbuff and Mooresville is doing. I just want to check the score on that one. 
Because that was a game... Ooh, Brebuff leads Mooresville 21-7 to in the fourth quarter. That's a little bit of a shocker to me because Brebuff has just kind of had a lackluster season this year. I would not have expected them to win. And Burbuff is driving too. They're they're at the uh, the Mooresville like twenty five yard line. CP is down. Is that Clinton Prairie? Or Crown Point. Are you talking about Crown Point? That's probably who you're talking about because I think Clinton Prairie lost. That'd be a pretty big one if uh, Crown Point lost because I I thought they had their sectional pretty much under wraps. Let's see. I want to see the, you know, let's see how Westfield and Carmel's doing. Westfield leads Carmel 21 to 9. And, and Westfield has the football. And that's what, sectional four? Yeah. Winner gets the winner of Zionsville and Noblesville. Here's a big run by Westfield. Around the corner goes the quarterback. He's in touchdown. And that's going to do it for Carmel, essentially, is Carmel will go down by 19 points with 10-14 to play in quarter number four. There is a flag down. And we'll see if that brings it back. It is going to be on Westfield, so bring that one back. Whiteland up big on Terre Haute North. How's the Cathedral game? I'm trying to find it on somewhere, but the last time I checked it was uh, 37 to um, 35 Cathedral with the lead. Last time I checked in on it. Yeah, four minutes ago, Cathedral tweeted, Irish begin the fourth quarter and are forced to, into their first punt of the night. Wildcats offense will begin from their own 20. There's 11-17 left on the clock. Irish lead 37-35. to 35. So, close one. I think I picked Whiteland in that one in, in their in their sectional. I'm trying to think. So yeah, actually Westfield or Carmel, sorry, sorry, Westfield. I was right the first time. Westfield's gonna kick a field goal to try to go up twenty four to nine. That would put them and they missed it too. So a missed field goal. So with 926, it will remain 21 to 9. There's another flag. In the meantime, I'm gonna oh my gosh, Brownsburg scored again. So Brownsburg's up 48 to 20 on Ben Davis. So I think it's safe to say we can go away from that game. Um because that one's pretty much wrapped up. A big statement win.
for Brownsburg. It was a flag on Carmel, apparently, as Westfield's got the ball back and is going to get all the way down to the six-yard line. Brownsburg seems tough. Yeah, it was, it was interesting because going into the tournament, now granted, you know, with 6A you get, you know, two weeks off between, or a week off between the end of the season and, and the sectionals, but you wondered how Brownsburg, Brownsburg would look because they had just lost to Hamilton Southeastern in the final game of the regular season. In the process, their quarterback, Jade Whitaker, goes down, so you wonder how they're going to come out, how they're going to perform. Ben, you know, They barely beat Ben Davis in the early matchup, So how is that going to play out uh, in the match? You know, in that in this matchup, and Brownsburg comes out and goes on the road and just lays the lumber on Ben Davis. You know, let's see. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Whiteland is Whiteland is up sixty-two to three on Terre Haute North. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that. Uh, no, uh, Jaden Whitaker is back. Jaden Whitaker, Jaden Whitaker did come back and uh, play in this game for Brownsburg, so that was big for them. So yeah, a big statement win for them because I think I mean they play the the team they'll play in the sectional championship will have gotten their second win of the season tonight um, because they're both 1-9. and nine. So by that perspective, um, is this Triton Central? No, it's just regular Triton. Um, by that perspective, you would like to think Brownsburg would get the win. Of course, I mean, heck, we thought Center Grove would run away with it against... Um, Um, we thought Brownsburg would, or sorry, we thought Center Grover would, would run away against Franklin Central, and that didn't happen. Okay, so I wonder if, so the, there's no way to watch. I'm going to Google it real quick. Cathedral versus Lawrence North. Okay, I'm. This is one of those like fake YouTube videos. It's like, oh, we're streaming your game, and they're not really. Okay, that's what this is. Okay, so I don't think there's any way to watch that live. So we'll see if they've got. Um, if there's like a stream going. Um, or a uh, an update thread. So there's no update since the punt, at least, for uh, Cathedral and Lawrence North. That'd be a big one. I know, I know. B. Scott um, is you know he's a Lawrence North alum, so he will love it if they can knock off Cathedral. Well, hey, I mean Mooresville's about to lose. That was my four A pick. South Adams lost. That was my one A pick. Um, so. As Westfield's got to run down into the end zone, he does get. He looked like he might have got stopped at first, but 
It's going to be a touchdown for Westfield, and that should do it as they'll go up 19 with 7.32 to play. So let's get another game up here. See what we can find. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and hit some scores up as well. Pick up where we left off. Um, Concord leads Goshen 31-6. Heritage Christian beats Shenandoah 21-6. Northridge over Logansport 34-24 in the fourth quarter. Perry Meridian beats Arsenal Tech 38-8. Uh, Eastbrook beats Alexandria 42 to 14 in the fourth. It's Kokomo over Western 28 to eight Portage. Portage is over crown point. That's the game you guys were talking about. Did I see, wait, did I, I feel like I saw Portage on the screen. This is what happens all the time when I'm watching games on IHSA. It's like, I feel it's like, I feel like I saw that team come across and I just saw Portage and kept scrolling and then was like, oh, wait, I actually kind of want to see what's going on with Portage. Because that's, that's a pretty big upset if that happens. Here. Does that refresh it? Oh, it does. Look at that. Kind of, I mean, not surprising that Carmel's losing, but surprising that it's by th how much it's, it is. It's surprising that they're losing by 18 points right now. That's what's kind of shocking. Yeah, I must have. I must have dreamt. Um, oh, here it is. I knew I saw it. So yeah, into the second quarter, we're going into halftime. Portage leads Crown Point fourteen to six. That's pretty nuts. So we'll leave it on that one. And in the meantime. Go through some scores. Hmm. Now contemplating <clears throat> if I want to be live through the duration of the second half. We'll see how well it goes. Um. <clears throat> so Chesterton leads Michigan City twenty-eight to fourteen. I'm going to refresh this Lawrence North Cathedral game. Here. See if anything new has happened there. Nope, nothing's happened there. Um Tecumseh leads North Davies twenty seven to fourteen, West Central over Taylor thirty two to nothing. Bloomington South. How is the Ben Davis Brownsburg game looking? The last time I checked, Brownsburg was up forty-eight to twenty on Ben Davis. So shocking, not again, not because of the result, but because of the score itself. Um, Bloomington South leads Columbus East thirty-five to seven. Cecina leads Clarksville thirty uh, forty-one to twelve. North Decatur over Milan, 25-14. Decatur Central over McCutcheon, 31-13. New Prairie over Lowell, 35-6. Fort Wayne Bishop Lures beats Cherubusco, 42-9. Triton Central over Brownstown Central, still 7-6. No update on that one. Uh, Lawrence Central all over North Central, 42-0 uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, Valpo over Laporte, 14-3 in the second quarter. Eastern Hancock trails Lapel, 34-13 in the fourth quarter. Fishers, Fishers beats Fort Wayne Northrop, 49-7. So that'll be that'll be fun next week. It'll be um, Hamilton Southeastern versus Fishers 
in the sectional championship game, and if you missed it during the regular season, um, Hamilton Southeastern and Fishers went to overtime, Hamilton Southeastern winning by just one point. So that's pretty nuts. Center Grove, uh, Center Grove, it was it was a weird one. Franklin Central led that one seven to three. Or sorry, for uh Franklin Central led that one ten to seven. They had scored in the fourth quarter to go up ten to seven. Um and then in the um fourth quarter, uh Center Grove was able to score a touchdown to go up fourteen to ten. Um and then that was it pretty much. So Franklin Central had the uh, back-to-back defending champions on the ropes uh, for a good chunk of that game. So that, that was pretty surprising. Because, you, I mean, you look at it when the draw happens, and you're like, okay, so Center Grove is in a sectional where literally every team besides them are under 500. Um, so this should be pretty, pretty easy for Center Grove to work through. And instead, you know, it's... Uh, it's a win for, uh, you know, it's Franklin Central, you know, taking it down to the wire. But yes, Franklin or Center Grove wins, fourteen to ten. Fort Wayne Schneider beats Dwayne or is leading Dwayne or thirty four to six. Covenant Christian over Riverton Park, thirty five to nothing. Uh, Noblesville all over Zionsville, thirty five to ten. That's pretty shocking. Uh, score of the Pike game. Let me see. Uh, last uh, update: Avon leads Pike sixteen to fourteen in the fourth quarter. Let's see. Uh, Owen Valley and Gibson Southern are tied at fourteen at the half. Andrean leads Laville eight nothing in the third quarter. I mean, that's that's going to be a knockout drag out defensive struggle because those are two of the better defenses in 2a if not the two best defenses i can't remember entirely but so crown point will start the with the football in the second half as the kickoff uh, is nearly is he nearly broke it. Did the Crown Point return man? He gets it up to about the 35, 40 yard line. There is a flag. Let's look at some more of these scores here. You have Evansville Wrights and Boonville tied at seven. Southridge and Corden Central. Uh, Southridge up thirty five to fourteen. Evansville North up on Floyd Central seven to nothing. Uh, Rochester all over Benton Central, forty-three to twelve. Columbus North uh, going to, or at least for now, looks like they'll be Jeffersonville, thirty-five to fourteen. So that'll be Columbus North versus Center Grove in that sectional championship game. North Judson over Triton right now, twelve to six in the third quarter. Uh, Mishawaka twelve nothing leaders over South Bend Adams. Hagerstown over Tinley, twenty-eight to nothing. Um, Mitchell Walker up 28 nothing on South Bend Adams. Uh, Traders Point uh, up 41 to 22 on North Vermilion in the fourth quarter. Uh, Bishop Chatard up 34 to 14 on Hamilton Heights. Uh, Danville and Weibo are tied at 28 in the fourth quarter. Uh, Newcastle leads Connorsville by one, 13 to 12 in the third quarter. Um, Jimtown over Glen 28 to seven. Warren Central game. Let's see if I can get a score of that one. Ah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double. <laughs> I'm gonna, guys. Okay, this is why you can't always trust Max Preps. Cause this, <laughs> this is the score. I don't know. If, can you guys see that? Here, maybe, uh, maybe I should switch the camera around. Here, let me let me see if I can switch the camera. I guys, sorry, I'm like a boomer. I need to figure out how to flip the camera. Well, regardless. Okay, okay, now it adjusted. Okay. It it showed 99 to nothing and then it showed 80 to nothing and now it shows 58 to nothing. 
So I think the overall overall consensus is we can assume <laughs> that Warren Central got the dub. We'll 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 fact check this. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, I don't I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it wasn't that. Okay, so that's not score of South Pole. Let's see. Does Southport have anything? Okay, so neither neither Southport or uh, Warren Central have really posted much. Ooh, Lawrence North fumbles and uh, Center Grove recovers. That's pretty pretty insane. Okay, so Okay, so here's the final courtesy of the Warren Warren Central uh, Athletic Department. It is a 58 to nothing win for Warren Central over Southport. So there you go. Not <laughs> definitely not 80 no to nothing or 99 to nothing, but still a good win nonetheless. That's <laughs> That's funny. I did pick Warren Central in that um, sectional. It, it, what's, it's, what's funny and unique about that sectional is that none of the teams were above 500. I think Warren Central was, or maybe... So Cr Crown Point just scored. It's 14-6. to six. It was a handoff around the corner. Crown Point gets into the end zone. So that cuts the Portage lead down to two. We'll see if they go for two. I, I don't know about you guys. I like to see teams go for two uh, as early as they can in, in these types of situations where, like, a two-point conversion ties it. I don't like when teams, like, just stay, like, a point or two behind and then have to go for two, like, on their last touchdown of the game. So, and it does look like they are going to go for two. To try to tie this game with Portage at 14. So here's the snap. It's going to be a throw and a wide open tight end in the end zone. So this game is tied. Crown Point and Portage are knotted at 14. But yeah, that Warren Central sectional. So they'll play Perry Meridian. It'll be Warren Central and Perry Meridian in the championship game. Yeah, Indianapolis Tech's 1-8. Perry Meridian's three and six. Warren Central is now the only team at five hundred at five and five with a win today. They were four and five, and then Southport was zero and nine. So it's now uh, Arsenal Tech one and nine. Perry Meridian four and six. Uh, Warren Central five and five, and Southport uh, is uh, zero and ten. So there is a chance that per if Perry Meridian can pull off the upset next week. There's a chance that it, you know, that a team in regionals will be, which I mean, I'm sure it's happened before. That's what happens when you have, you know, every single team in the state making the playoffs. Uh, but it'll be interesting to have, you know, potentially a team that's five and six in the regional. Cathedral update: Last time I saw uh, Lawrence North had just fumbled. Yeah, recovering a fumble. Um, yeah, Jackson Wingert recovers a fumble by Lawrence North. With uh, four minutes to go, Cathedral up 37 to 35 still. Oh, I don't know why 
why I closed that window. Lafayette Central Catholic beats Lewis Cass, uh, forty-eight to twenty-seven. Ooh, a, pe a, a pick six or a pick six, as I was about to say. Uh, Keaton Jones with the pick six. Avon now up on Pike, twenty-five to fourteen, with five fifty-seven remaining in the fourth quarter. Hobart up in their game, 14 to 10. New Palestine, they win 33 to 9 over Greenfield Central. They'll play the winner of Connorsville and Newcastle. Evansville Memorial up on Jasper 40 or 21 to 18 in the fourth quarter. So on third down and two, here comes Portage. It's going to be a pass. The quarterback can't find anybody. Nearly sacked. Works out of it. Throws incomplete to the sideline. So just like that, a quick three and out for Portage, and they will punt it back to Crown Point. So there is the punt. Crown point will just let it bounce. It'll go to the 43 of the Bulldogs, and that is where CP will take over. Let me see if I've got any update on Lawrence North here. So we have an update. Cathedral gets a touchdown. Danny O'Neill completes the pass to so Sawyer Sheets for the touchdown. Cathedral now up 43-35. to This is with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So that puts Cathedral up by nine. Or sorry. Yeah, it puts them up by nine with two minutes to play. So Cathedral wrapping things up. They're likely going to win. I mean, the the teams that we thought were going to be the favorites coming into the year, Center Grove and Cathedral in 6A, having scares. Uh, Cathedral at home and uh, Center Grove on the road. And both of those teams, you would have thought, because Cathedral is also a team that's in a sectional where nobody's above 500, it feels like. I want to commend you guys out there. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, as much as I want more likes, I also like the fact that it's at 420. So keep that up. Good job, everyone. We made it. Here's a run by Crown Point. Dude, this guy is so fast. Number two off to the races for Crown Point. He's going to score. Number two is lightning quick. The Bulldogs are going to be up 20 to 14. God, that guy's fast.
Jonathan Johnson on the carry. Jonathan Johnson gets the handoff at about his 45-ish yard line and just shows off the speed. Just turns on that second gear and just runs by everyone. That was incredible. Uh, Whiteland update, um, I don't know the exact score, but Whiteland is putting it on, uh, Terre Haute North. Let me get you an exact score here. Uh, Whiteland with the win, 63-3 to winners over Terre Haute North Vigo. So, an instant classic, a barn burner, one for the ages, so Crown Point now up 21 to 14 with 651 to play in the third quarter. And I mean that's what you needed if you're Crown Point. You're down 14 to 6 to a team in Portage who you took care of in the regular season. I mean, uh Crown Point won the regular season matchup 42 to 7, so you're thinking, okay, we we've, we've got this under wraps and then Portage puts together a really good half of football. They're up 14-6, to six, and so you're wondering, is Crown Point going to get upset um, in the sectional semifinals? And then they get a touchdown, they get the two-point conversion, and then just a lightning-quick run by Johnson to put the Bulldogs up by seven. And here comes that strong Crown Point defense back onto the field. Snap on the ground. It's going to be a screen pass. And that play for Portage went nowhere. The snap was on the ground. The quarterback threw it to his right. It was caught, and they tried to make some room, but it didn't work. It didn't work out. There is a flag on the field, though. We'll see if it's a hold or a block in the, block in the back. Yeah, it is against Portage. So not not the second half that Portage has wanted so far. They had an eight-point lead. Crown Point marches down the field, scores, and ties the game up. Then you have a three and out. You give the ball right back to Crown Point, who scores. Now it's first down and 20. And it's going to be a throwaway by the quarterback. Let's check back in on Lawrence North. I believe it's over now. Yep, Cathedral official. This game is over. Cathedral gets the win 44-35 to on Lawrence North. So... Lawrence North put forth a great effort. I mean, it was a good game, um, but uh, just didn't have quite enough to knock off Cathedral. Andrean pulling away from LaVille. So this is a little surprising as you're defending 2A state champion. Andrean 59er squad was a team that I thought was going to get beat by LaVille, to be honest. Um, I thought LaVille was just a little bit too... Just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. I mean, both teams have strong defenses. 
LaVille had the better offense statistically. But right now it's 22-6. to six. Andrean over LaVille as Portage has to punt it away again. It's going to take a Portage bounce to about the 46-yard line. So around the same spot the Crown Point had to start from last time is where they'll start this time. So going back through the scores again, a lot of games going final here. We'll go through the games that have gone final. Bremen beats Lake Station uh, 53 to 7. Fort Wayne Snyder beats Dwanger 41 to 6. Knox over West Noble 22 to nothing. Columbia City over to Kalb 49 to 7. As here's the snap, it's going to be a handoff crown point around the corner. It's across the 50 of the 45 down to the 41 yard line. So, first down into Portage territory uh, goes the Bulldogs. Um, Lafayette Central Catholic beats Lewis Cass 48 to 27. Brownsburg officially getting the win over Ben Davis 48 to 20. East Central over Silver Creek 42 to 6. Uh, Park Tudor beats Fountain Central 42 to 26. Uh, Sullivan beats Cascade 30 to 14. Ron Colley all over Chris Pisatic 69 to nothing. Uh, Monrovia does knock off Speedway 21 to 20. As here is Johnson for the Bulldogs again gets around the corner, shows off that blazing speed. He's going to be down to the 10, and he's going to be forced out of bounds as the camera work went behind a uh, light pole, so I didn't see the end of that run there. But it's going to be a first down and Crown Point. Crown Point's on a mission right now. Northridge beats Logansport 34 to 24. Providence beats West Washington 28 to 12. Shout out to uh, Trevor Beast, one of our followers over on the YouTube channel. Uh, Indianapolis Lutheran with a 63 to nothing win over Cloverdale. Northwood with the 52 to 24 win over South Bend St. Joseph. As it's a first down and 10 for Crown Point just outside the 10 yard line. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff right up the gut and down to the five yard line. So it'll be close to a first down, if not first down territory, for Crown Point. West Central with the 40 to nothing win over Taylor. Bloomington South beats Columbus East 35 to 7. Cecina beats Clarksville 48 to 18. North Decatur uh, beating Milan 25 to 14. Lawrence Central beating North North Central 42 to nothing. Uh, Garen Catholic beats Tippecanoe Valley 34 to 14. Fort Wayne Lures over Cherubusco 42 to 9. Here's the snap by Johnson. He goes up the gut into the end zone. Touchdown. Uh, two touchdowns and as many dr uh, drives for Johnson. This crown point now will go up 27 to 14 with complete control. Just eight minutes into quarter number three. And it's going to be gearing on 22 points for Crown Point in this quarter alone after being held to just six in the first half. Adams Central uh, beats South Adams 55 to 20. New Powell over Greenfield Central 33 to 9. Lafayette Jeff over Lake C Central 34 to 20. Norwell over Concordia 37 to nothing. Rochester over Benton Central, 50 to 26. Uh, North Judson over Triton, 25 to 6. Heritage Christian over Shenandoah, 21 to 6. Uh, Hagerstown beats Tinley, 41 to nothing. Uh, Concord over Goshen, 31 to 6. Lawrenceburg with yet another shutout. They beat Greensburg, uh, 28 to nothing. Chatard over Hamilton Heights, 41 to 14. Traders Point beats North Vermilion, 48 to 28. Covenant Christian beats Riverton Park 35 to 6. Kokomo beats Western uh 28 to 8. Uh Pike Central over West Vigo 22 to 15. Martinsville over Bedford North Lawrence 56 to 15. Uh, Bluffton over Tipton 29 to 18. Whiteland did get the win 63 to 3. Uh Center Grove over Franklin 14 to 10. Perry Meridian over Arsenal Tech, 38 to 8. Warren Central over Southport, 58 to nothing. Eastside over Manchester, 42 to 21. 
Fishers over Fort Wayne Northrop, 49 to 7. Noblesville over Zionsville, 35 to 10. Hamilton Southeastern, 35 to nothing winners over Homestead. Alexandria loses to Eastbrook, 42 to 14. Yorktown makes it to the sectional championship. They beat Garrett, 22 to 13. Uh, Whiteland, like you said, 63 to 3 winners over Terre Haute North Vigo. So if you're Portage in this game, you led by eight at the half, had an undefeated state title contender on the ropes through the first half, and have been really punched in the mouth here in the third quarter. So pivotal drive for Portage here. You have to score. You have to get back in this game. You have to do something on this drive as this is an option play, a little bit busted. I think he gets a couple of yards there. But it's it's put up or shut up time right now for Portage. You either have to score here. If you don't, you run the risk of going down 21, which, I mean, once I, I think if Crown Point scores before Portage does, I think it's pretty much a done deal. Because there's no way if you're Portage you can blow a 14 to 6 lead, have Crown Point score like 29 points in the quarter, and come back in the fourth quarter and rally and win. Andrean did get the win. I was actually surprised. I'm a little bummed. I'm bummed at myself because Andrean was my state championship pick. Their regular season wasn't. I mean, they're 6-3, and three, but that's a little bit misleading. I mean, their losses were to this Crown Point team. They lost to a team from out of state. Um, LaVille, though, looked really good in the regular season. Their numbers were just a little bit better, so I went off of Andre, and I went with LaVille instead. Um, and they meet in the sectional semis, and it's a win for Andre. So Andre gets an opportunity. They'll play... I wonder, who do they play in the sectional championship game? They'll play Bremen. I mean, LaVille was 10-0. and Their offense and defense was really good. And Maryville, yep, they got the win as well. Maryville, my 5A pick to win. First down and 10 for Portage, 3-10 to go in the third quarter. And that play goes nowhere as a slew of Bulldogs take down the quarterback for a loss. Yeah, so Andrean, you got to like, I mean, I thought the winner of that game, Andrean and LaVille, would be in pretty good shape to win that sectional So a big win for Andrean. You gotta like their chances moving forward after getting that big win because Laville I thought was was really tough. Second down and twelve for Portage. Snap dropping back, looking looking. He'll fire it deep. Does he have a man? He would have been a sensational grab, as there was a Portage receiver in the vicinity. Try to kind of do. Is this too old of a reference for you guys? Tyrone Prothrow from Alabama, back in the day, catches the ball on the back of the Southern Miss uh, defender. Um, was kind of going to be a catch, sort of like that, if if he was able to make it. But instead, it's knocked away, incomplete. It's going to be third down and twelve for Portage. It's fun to say Portage, by the way. In case you were wondering, porridge is just fun to say. It reminds me a lot of porridge. As here is the throw. It's going to be picked off. Crown Point gets an interception. The Bulldogs come away with a big turnover. It was a rushed throw. Portage had a guy on the sideline, but Crown Point just jumps the route, gets the interception. That's huge. 
That is huge. And Crown Point gets the ball. They, uh, let's see, or maybe they don't, because there's a penalty, it looks like. The broadcast is showing the Crown Point sideline. Oh, it could have just been a timeout. I think it is just a timeout. So, yeah, Crown Point. Okay, so it was a penalty. It was on Crown Point after the interception. So instead of starting with the ball at what would have been about the 30-yard line, they instead have to start at the 40, but it's still in plus territory on the Portage side of the field. Here is the snap. It's going to be a fake handoff. It's going to be a throw by Johnson. He's got a man. It's caught by the tight end for Crown Point down to around the 20-yard line, so about a 19, 20-yard gain. It's going to be a lock for Crown Point. It's going to be first and 10. So first down and 10 for Crown Point at about the 20-yard line. It's going to be a snap. Johnson's going to keep this one. He's got the speed. He's around the edge. He's to the 15. He's to the 10. He's going to speed all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Crown Point. 21-yard touchdown run by Johnson, and the Bulldogs are well in control. With the extra point, it will be the 29th point of the third quarter. A quarter that started with Crown Point down by eight points. And there's still a minute 40 to play in the quarter as well. So the extra point is good. I'll, I'm going to stick around to the end of the third. Um... But I think Crown Point has this one well in hand now. It looked a little rough. That's certainly for sure. Um, in the meantime, let's see if I can refresh this page again and see if I can get any scores that we missed. I don't think we've got any scores that we don't didn't already have before here. Boonville right now leads Wrights twenty to fourteen. Triton Central leads Brownstown Brownstown Central twenty four to nineteen.
<laughs> Portage going backwards on this drive, too. Hamilton Southeastern dub. They get the win. Them and Fishers in the sexual championship is going to be a fun one next week. Who won with Cathedral? Cathedral. They won 44-35 to um, over Lawrence North. It was a close one. Second down and 10. It's a throw across his body for Portage. So 26 seconds and counting left in the quarter. Here's the snap. It's a handoff, and the running back stops right at the line for Portage, and that will end the quarter. A sensational game by Crown Point to rally. They look like they might be on the ropes. A lot of teams, I mean, of course, you have the two-week layoff. You wonder about the rust. Center Grove comes out slow against Franklin Central. Um, you have Cathedral having a little bit more trouble than you expect against Lawrence North, although Lawrence North is good. You've got um, Portage uh, you know, taking advantage of Crown Point, although, I mean, I guess all these teams for you know in 6A and 5A have had the same layoff, but still you wondered how that was going to affect some of the teams that were favorites, um, and they've been taking care of business. So... I think that's where we're going to leave it tonight because um, Crown Point is um, Crown Point is now pretty much in control of this game. If they, if, they, if that game would have been um, you know a bigger upset, if that the upset would have come through for Portage, I probably would have stayed on a little bit longer. Um, but that's where we'll wrap it up. Speedway Soft Monrovia on top. Yeah, I I I in my heart of hearts, having been to Speedway a couple of times to broadcast games, I kind of, I was, I'm not going to lie, I kind of wanted to see Speedway win. I thought they had a chance uh, to go far. Uh, but hey, Mark Jane's, Mark Jane's alma mater, Monrovia, uh, they advanced the sectional championship game. Um, so, that's a pretty big one. And I, I who, because they play the winner, do they play the winner of Weibo and Danville? I haven't seen a score in that game, but But, uh, yeah, an insane night of football, and we'll be doing this again next week for the sectional championship game. Uh, so on 3C Media, the plan is this. Um, there's going to be a video releasing uh, over the next couple of days. Um, tomorrow, uh, we uh, there's going to be a video that releases on the 3C Media YouTube channel uh, about Sam Ellinger starting for the um, Colts on Sunday. Um, and, our, and B. Scott and I reacted to that, gave our predictions for Sunday. Um, we also, um, have a video coming out on Sunday. If you missed this live or any part of this live, you want to come back to it. Um, I'm going to post it to YouTube. So be on the lookout for that on Sunday. On, uh, Wednesday, uh, we will have our college basketball preview. Um, so that'll be coming out. So make sure you're, uh, on the lookout for that. We'll be breaking down IU, Purdue, um, uh, Notre Dame, getting into the weeds there. Um, and then coming up over the weekend, in addition to going live and having that content as well, we will have a preview for the end of the NASCAR season as their championship is uh, next week. Um, or is not this weekend, but next weekend. So a lot of content down the pike, 3C Media. Uh, make sure you're following at 3C Media Sports on Twitter, uh, 3C Media on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, uh, everywhere. Go make sure you're following Locked In because uh, that's the schedule for the content coming up. Thanks again, guys, for hanging out tonight. It was another fun night of Friday Night Lights, um, and it was fun to react uh, to these games. You know, again, another uh, you know big win by Brownsburg tonight. They set the tone for their their run. 
Um, they'll play, I believe, Avon next week. Um, Westfield, an impressive win tonight over Carmel. So a lot of great games uh, that have transpired tonight, and it's going to be even more fun next week uh, when we get into sectional championship games. But until then, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend.